It's been described as a grave mistake, but does what happened on Monday point to something else? Uh, uh, a lack of professional uh, behaviour by some in the IDF. I mean, as we've said, two people have been dismissed and three people disciplined as a result of what happened. Thanks, Kamali. It's great to be here. Um, indeed, the reality of this incident is a true tragedy, uh, something that should have never happened, something should have, that could have and should have been prevented. Um, the IDF, uh, through an independent inquiry, uh, independent of the chain of command, I mean, um, conducted uh, an uh, a in-depth uh, expose of all of the operational intelligence, all of the operational visual aids, all of the capabilities and the communications between the different forces, and came to a very, very clear conclusion that there was uh, incorrect uh, identification decision, mm -hmm. uh, making errors and non-compliance with the standard operating procedures. So this is the why they are being disciplined, as, as you rightly pointed out. No, I don't think that that actually represents a broader problem, as you implied, but rather how we deal with problems as they arise, uh, mm -hmm. under the understanding that there is a war zone. You know, we mm -hmm. are in a state of war. Yeah, uh, and we'll come on to some of that in a, in a moment, Peter. But just some specifics on this. Is it usual for the IDF to be supervising convoys at night by drone? Um, of course, when we are facing a, a, an enemy like Hamas that is doing everything to try and commandeer humanitarian goods, then there is surveillance. Uh, this was one case where, where we were conducting this video surveillance. Um, and in the course of the convoy, as it moved on, um, the communications to the forces on the ground um, did not receive the fact that the WCK vehicles would be there. This is the uh, epicenter of the failure. Um, the communication that, that, that did not go down to uh, who needed to receive that information. So when they saw armed people aboarding one of the trucks and then saw four uh, vehicles that from the visual surveillance appeared to be very similar uh, to the Toyota pickups that came into Israel on the 7th of October, they concluded mistakenly that these are Hamas terrorists. And that basically, when they didn't know that the WCK vehicles were supposed to be there, um, um, they okay. went into a, a mode where they were chasing after an enemy that wasn't actually the enemy. Uh, and Peter, so let's just be clear what you're saying, because the WCK said that they informed the IDF that it was happening. And in your report here, it says that it, two junctures, WCK attempted to be contacted on the ground and in their Europe headquarters, but that wasn't happening. But now you're telling me that it wasn't clear for some of the operators whether or not it was a WCK even on the road at that point. When you pointed out the five officers from the rank of major all the way up to major general that have been disciplined from uh, removal from their uh, positions, uh, relief of duty, or all the way up to or, or through reprimanding, um, it's precisely because there is a need for coordination. The coordination didn't work properly on the Israeli side. Huh. Um, WCK were were they conducted everything that they were supposed to do. There is no complaint on on their on our behalf to them. They they did what they were supposed to do. The communication didn't go to the field, uh, and those that are responsible for that have been reprimanded. Um, or relieved of their duties. Final point on that, you said the communication wasn't there. Peter, can you be clear as to what actually happened? Was the call made, was the message sent, was it ignored, or did it not go? Um, no, the communication, uh, we knew that, the, that, the, that it was planned, but the vehicles of the WCK that were targeted, uh, the, they, the forces on the ground didn't know that they were supposed to come. Uh, and when they did one plus one and they saw the gunman on the truck and they saw these four trucks, these four uh, pickup trucks like Toyota pickups that came in on 7th October, mm -hmm. it appeared to them these, this, they came to the very conclusion that this must be Hamas and therefore they are appeared to be targets and that's what they thought that they were striking. Uh, they failed um, repeatedly in the course of uh, the pursuit after what they thought was Hamas uh, because the, the checks and balances that are in place were not implemented. And that's why we say that there are problems in the standard operating procedures or in the decision-making process. And that's why a major and a colonel have been relieved of their duties and a, brig a brigadier general, uh, another full colonel, and also a major general have been reprimanded.
So, Peter, you're telling us it's the, the trucks that may have caused the confusion, because in the report it suggests that there are two men seen at different times, it's 10.28 and 10.46, potentially with guns. And it's at that point, the later man who was identified as having a gun at 10.46, that those on command on the ground think that it may well be Hamas involved. So, but was, it, was it the... Yeah. Go on. No, that, that is precisely the red flag that indicate that um, brought their attention to this. Um, at that stage, they did receive, uh, or they raised the red flag to the command, and, and the command instructed them not to strike um, uh, the, because, they are, because there is a humanitarian operation. They mm -hmm. didn't distinguish that they were actually the WCK vehicles. And then they, were, they continued to pursue the, the vehicles as if they were Hamas vehicles, and this is the tragedy that came out of this yeah. uh, event. I mean, Peter, it's a very confusing picture that you're painting to us, but let's just keep moving forward if we can. And I know that there was a briefing last night to uh, some reporters, um, but pointedly, the moment when the armed individual enters one of the vehicles that the IDF say they saw has not been shown to reporters. Why is that? I think, uh, no, I think we did actually reveal to the, the journalists yesterday um, extensive footage uh, several minutes of the of this incident, showing both the gunshot and what appears to be pot potentially a gunman going in the vehicles. Uh, you know, this is uh, the part of the pro process that we are conducting now, maintaining um, the investigation. I can say that after we've the, the, the independent investigation came to these conclusions, their founding, findings will be transferred to the military advocate general, which will now look into the potential of. Um, a, a criminal investigation that could, that could happen as well. Yeah, uh, Peter, it's our understanding from our journalists who are reporting this that that footage has not been shown. The the person thought to have a weapon getting into a vehicle leading to the miscalculation has not been shown to the journalists working on this for us. Right, I think um, I think it was. I wasn't in the briefing yesterday, but from what I understand, the, the, the video that was shown was the, the video that has indeed okay. got um, gunmen identified in and around and approaching the vehicles. It's a very, Peter, very complex situation. Absolutely, Peter, and I, and, I, and I respect that. I respect you answering the questions, but do you not see that this points exactly to the problem that is at hand here, that, that when people's lives uh, are in your hands when there are two drones overhead and there is this breakdown in communication, you're not even certain as to what information has been released. It's very difficult for, for people to, to draw the, the conclusion that this was a grave mistake and not something else. What else could it be other than a very grave mistake, Kamali? I mean, we do not target... Uh, intentionally, and the forces on the ground didn't target intentionally. They were under the misunderstanding that these were Hamas because they identified gunmen in and around those vehicles on top of one of the trucks, even actually firing. Um, and so, absolute, it is an absolute tragedy. It's something that needed to be and should have been prevented, as our chief of staff, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi, said yesterday uh, morning. And, and I think what we're trying to do now is, first of all, fine-tune the system so that the humanitarian effort can mm. continue. The government instructed the defence establishment yesterday to prepare more access through areas crossing in the north of Gaza Strip and also increase the capacity of Kerem Shalom. In order to, but in order for the goods that are going into Gaza, and there is about 260 trucks yesterday that went into Gaza and only about 80 of them were distributed within the Gaza Strip. Mm. So we need to improve that capability and we need to do it by improving the coordination uh, rebuilding the trust. Of course, there is a, a severe challenge here. We do yeah. want WCK to come back. Uh, uh, we've engaged with them over the last two days extensively. Um, and, and I think it's what is important is to get the humanitarian aid to the people on one hand, while we continue to pursue our military goals on the other, of getting rid of Hamas and bringing home our hostages. Uh, and Peter, I, I'm pleased to hear you say you have reached out to WCK, because of course, as you know, it's necessary uh, and very needed that those aid groups are in there working. Talk to us about those in the room when these decisions are made. My understanding is, in this instance, there was not a military lawyer there who was uh, to sign off on this strike, the, the three strikes that destroyed those three vehicles. Going forward, will a military lawyer be present in these kind of instances? So, I th there were, in the process of this strike, there were several uh, uh, failures, and indeed, the legal uh, accompanying, but also the, the battle damage assessment. If you've conducted one strike, 
Uh, you need to assess what the damage is. Are the enemy? Are, are, is there more intelligence that has come in? Uh, do you need to continue to do a second strike? And I think that the, the accumulation of the problems uh, is not only around is an issue of lawyers, but it's also um, the rules and regulations are in place for a specific reason. We need mm. to ha stand by those rules and regulations. Some of them are legal, but I, I, I would say that most of our rules and regulations are actually operational, and they give us all of the tools to conduct our warfare against Hamas. And does that warfare allow you, Peter, to, to destroy any vehicle that you think may contain Hamas? It says in the report that there was no certainty that Hamas were in the vehicle. You thought that was the case. But if that's the case, will you destroy any vehicle that you think may contain Hamas? No, I think that's exactly when there was no certainty that should have been the, the, the foot on the brake that stopped the movement. Um, and that is precisely why we are highlighting it in, in, in the results of the findings of the in investigation. Uh, there were many uh, red flags that should have stopped the operation, the strikes as they happen. Um, no, the, the IDF conducts its strikes against the enemy where they are hiding, and we know that they've weaponized the civilian arena. They don't walk around in uniform. They are in civilian clothes. They're taking advantage of schools, mosques, hospitals, as we've seen extensively. And this is the challenge of the enemy that we're facing, an enemy that has no regard or little regard um, to the values that you and I hold, hold dearly. Uh, Peter, what's going to change going forward in the way the IDF operates? So what I know is that we're engaging with the international humanitarian organisations on one hand to improve the coordination on the ground. That absolutely needs to be clear. One of the things that came out of the investigation was that the visual surveillance didn't identify the WCK stickers because they were because of the night conditions and that they had no uh, thermal or, or other materials in on their on their stickers that would highlight that there is something out of the ordinary. Uh, on the other hand, the internal processes need to be much better and much tighter, and, and that indeed we have a operations, a humanitarian operations room in the Southern Command um, in order to make sure that the, the flow of the information reaches the people at the end of the chain of command so that forces that, that have a misunderstanding that this is a Hamas vehicle uh, are actually brought, it's brought to their attention, no, this is a vehicle of an international humanitarian organisation. OK, many lessons to be learned. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, I do appreciate you making the time to speak to us today. Thanks for being with us, Peter. Thank you. Good evening.